that doesn't mean this is the only way or that it's the right way. It's just the fastest way. Let's face it, these four liters, they're bulletproof, but they're kind of a turd. <laughs> they don't have a lot of power. Hey, what's going on guys? A while back, my buddy gave me a bored out throttle body for the YJ here, and I've been running it. I wanna talk about the things that I liked about it and the things I can't stand and why I'm about to pull it back off of there. All right, so there it is, guys. Now my buddy used to take these out of junkyards and like sandblast them, get them painted up, and he would get the bottoms of them machined out to 62 millimeters so that they're a bored out throttle body. I don't have the stock airbox. I have this like crappy eBay cold air intake. But anyway, I might have noticed a little bit of like throttle response or a little bit of get up and go out of this thing, but honestly, it whistles like crazy. I even took it back off and I made another gasket to see if that would fix it and it's not and I think what's happening is air is leaking past the butterfly valve in there and it just makes this whistle when I'm running down the road. So I'm actually going to pull it off of here and compare it to a stock one. Oops, there went my clamp. And there's so much water in this intake from the louvers and it rained today anyway that should be it all right so here is my oem one and here is that board one so i'm pretty sure you can see the difference in how big that hole is now they're the same up here but for whatever reason on the factory one if you open the butterfly you can see they neck it down to like 50, 57 or so millimeters and this is bored out to 62. So it's straight all the way through and it matches the opening size on the intake. And that's great, but what I suspect is this one is leaking air somewhere around this butterfly valve. And honestly, the noise is horrible. I'll put a clip in here so you can hear what it sounds like. So now I will suggest this if you do switch to one of these and there's some people that actually make them aftermarket on eBay, but if you're gonna switch to them, what you're gonna wanna do is disconnect the battery on your Jeep and kind of discharge the computer so that it loses what little information that it has on like your, you know, this is OBD1 on a YJ. So I don't know if it has fuel trims and all that, but it does have a little bit of a memory on air and fuel. So you wanna clear that stuff out before you change either from a big one to a small one or vice versa now if you have a newer jeep like a tj it's gonna have fuel trims and all that stuff so you definitely want to do it but i'm pretty sure the yj has like a last 50 starts or last 100 starts some type of memory in the obd1 and it does adjust air and fuel based off of the oxygen sensor and all that stuff you can just disconnect your battery for at least five minutes so anyway you can see i i ran this for a while i got sick of the whistling i went back to my factory one that's why some of that red paint kind of came off of here. It stuck on my hose and transferred to this. Then I decided to get a new gasket and give this another try. And here we are again taking it off. And it's literally just going to go in the trash. I just have to take the idle air control and the throttle position sensor off of here. If you have a TJ, oftentimes you'll have a, like a map sensor right here. But on the YJ, that's on the firewall. So you don't have to worry about that. This is also a good opportunity to clean out your idle air control valve if you haven't done it. I've done it recently, so I'm not going to bother. And that's all she wrote. And you don't need to kill these, just get them good and snug. You don't want to crack the plastic or strip the threads out in the aluminum. This one, you kind of just twist it until you can feel that o-ring push in there. So here's a funny story. I had bought a new gasket the last time I tried this and it tore taking it off. So we're just doing some cereal box cardboard gasket. It's gonna work. Clap. 
So another thing I'm gonna cover in this video real quick is how to adjust your TV cable. This is only if you have an automatic transmission. The YJs had the Torque Flight uh, 999. I think the 2.5s had the 904. Then the later YJs and the TJs had the 32RH, which is just a Torque Flight with the uh, lockup torque converter in third gear. To the best I know, they all have TV cables and they all need to be adjusted right to work right. My Jeep actually has an AW4 that came out of a Comanche or a Cherokee. And I'll show you real quick how to do that when we put this back together. Just gonna get these all started first before I tighten any of them. I wouldn't tighten these any tighter than, you know, just with a tool like this. Like I would not put a ratchet on here and crank on these at all. And we got our two electrical connectors to hook back up. Don't forget our clamp. And our eBay intake dealy. Now we've got our throttle cable, which goes on this ball on the back side. If you got crews, it goes there. And the TV cable goes right here. Okay, so now for your throttle valve cable adjustment, what you want is that when you're at full throttle, you want it to be tight or somewhat snug. You don't want slop in it. So like, if you push it all the way in, that gets so tight I can't even get my throttle to 100%. So that tightens it and this way loosens it. So you can see that's still kind of loose because I went all the way. So the way that I do this is I push the button, I push that all the way in, and then I just slowly depress the throttle to full throttle and eventually it'll start pulling on the cable instead of the sheathing. And once I get it all the way to full throttle, I let go of the button and then it's adjusted. So now it's a little bit loose right here, but when you get to full throttle, it makes it all the way first and foremost. And secondly, it's tight. It's not loose. And at least on hydraulic transmissions, what this does is it changes the line pressure of your transmission and it kind of changes your shift points and stuff and if this is way off it'll upshift when you're not ready to upshift or you know too early sometimes it won't shift at all and you'll be stuck in second gear so it's literally that easy to adjust it now what you can do there's five little lines back here and you can kind of mark where you were that way if you adjust this and you don't like how the change was you can put it back and i'll show you those real quick you can see those little indents right there so you can count them or use a paint marker whatever mark where you were at so you can always put it back like if you were on the third line you can put it back there but again I prefer to just kind of let it pull cable until it has all it wants and then let go nice and snug nice and loose so obviously some of the advantages of putting one of these on your Jeep is you're taking away that restriction because it's like 62 at the top and then it necks down to 50 something and then the intake is back to 62 and obviously the factory did that for a reason they thought that was optimal probably for fuel economy or whatever but if you're really wanting to open this thing up and let it sing and get the most power in combination with some other mods it really makes sense to open this up so of all the things that i've done on my jeep the one that made the biggest difference was switching to the four hole um, Dodge Neon fuel injectors. There's also a Ford one. I can't remember which one it was, but the Neon ones I believe are 703s or 704s. Um, and what that did, I didn't really notice a lot of a power gain, but it seemed to idle and just, it just seemed smoother and it was way more snappy. The throttle was much more responsive and just overall, they were actually great. Let's face it, these four liters, they're bulletproof, but they're kind of a turd. They don't have a lot of power. Probably the only downside of running one of these throttle bodies is A, going to be the cost. I mean, it's not that expensive, but for what you gain from it, it's just... I don't know if it's worth it. Even if you found one for 50 bucks, I have a hard time saying that it's worth it. So I would just say going into it, if you're going to buy one of these and expecting some kind of a noticeable gain, you're probably going to be disappointed. But if you're like me and you just like messing with your Jeep and you really don't care what's a hundred bucks, whatever, you know, go for it. So now we're going to reset the computer. Um, I'm going to show you the way that I do it. That doesn't mean this is the only way or that it's the right way. It's just the fastest way. If you just disconnect your battery, you still gotta wait a while 
for the capacitors in the ECU to discharge for it to lose its memory. And I want to make that quicker. So the way that you do that is you take the positive terminal off the battery. Oh boy. And now I've got way too much stuff hooked up to it to reach it over to ground. So what I'm going to do is take a ground cable and I'm just going to jump this over to ground. So you're not going to short anything out with this because there's no power hooked up anymore. The power starts and stops right here at the battery. So basically I'm just going to touch that on there. I'm going to touch that on there and that is going to discharge those capacitors and the computer is reset. And like I said earlier, that's just to get rid of any memory that it has from having that bigger throttle body on there. So now it basically just has to relearn with what it has. So I welcome anybody to correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm pretty sure these OBD1 Jeeps have something like last 50 starts or drives, or maybe last 100, where it just kind of has a memory. So it has like a baseline air and fuel mapping. So by doing this, you're like resetting this. So now it has to relearn the next several times that you drive. So the idle's nice and low, so that it doesn't sound like there's any leaks on it. I'm gonna let this warm up, and take it for a drive, see how it does. So this thing mostly did the whistling when I was getting up to speed or when I was at like 55 or so. So we're about to accelerate and find out. I still hear a little bit of whistle. It's not as bad though. So a little bit, you hear it? I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear this over the wind, but I can't do it on command now. Yeah, I don't know if you guys were able to hear that. It had just this little bit of whistle right before it shifted to fourth gear. It was nowhere near as bad as it used to be, but I did kind of reuse a homemade gasket. So I'm gonna get a real gasket to put in there and then we should be fine. So, you know, I really wanted this to work for me, but again, I just have a bad unit. So if you guys have any brands that you recommend uh, either off of eBay or whatever that are a reasonable price for the 62 millimeter throttle bodies, let me know down in the comments because I'd like to get one that actually works without whistling. So I hope there was a few tips that helped you guys in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. And I'll show you a sneak peek of what it's going to be. This is what happens when a mechanic tries to do body work. It's not turning out too bad.